Okay, let's get started. Today, I will continue the uh, rest of the CTC discussions that I couldn't cover in the last time, which is uh, relaxing the conditional independence assumption. And then uh, the rest of the time, I will uh, discuss about RN transducer. Okay, so the, uh, the today's agenda first part is a CTC. So if we have a speech equation pipeline, uh, CTC is uh, one of the end-to-end -end method to replacing everything. And some of them are actually debut of the uh, last uh, the, the last week lecture, uh, but important. So I want to demark it again. CTC has uh, the conditional uh, uh, does not have a, uh, the, the level token dependency. CTC has a conditional independence assumption. That is very different from the other uh, the end to end ASR. And I mentioned that it is not always bad. Actually, uh, the, this uh, conditional independence assumption also had some benefit. And also, I mentioned about the way to relaxing the conditional independence assumption in CTC. And one of the methods was using the intermediate representation here. This uh, intermediate representation uh, can already have uh, some information about token since this is deep neural network. So gradually making the representation to be similar to the what we want in the output label. And then she, later, uh, the, the uh, following layers has some kind of a, uh, the, uh, self attention or BLSTEM to consider the, the uh, label dependencies. And then the one of the method, intermediate CTC is setting the loss here so that we can have our explicit uh, the, uh, the dependency uh, of uh, this uh, hidden state representation. But this is still loss. Uh, this is not uh, the completely uh, the representing this part as token. So the other approach, uh, self-condition uh, based approach is actually uh, changing this uh, the, the output to be the softmax which means that we actually doing our speech equation in these shadow layers, and then uh, the, the inserting this information to the uh, middle of the layers. So that if we have some ASR result here, this information is actually feeded here. And then uh, the, the, uh, doing the self, uh, self attention or BLSTM to explicitly consider the level dependency. So this uh, self-conscious CDC actually has uh, shown a significant improvement uh, from the normal uh, CTC. So actually CTC has been uh, uh, improved in recently, in these the two years. Uh, first, uh, the, 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 the introduction of the self-attention transformer. Second, conformer. Third, this self conditioned uh, intermediate CTC. And the fourth, actually, uh, this is uh, the one of the other uh, method that I will explain it, combination with other method. So uh, the CTC uh, has some kind of limitations. Uh, and the, there is a kind of a quite interesting uh, the, con uh, the, the complementary nature compared with attention, right? So the question is, how about combining CTC and attention? Attention had some kind of issue in the uh, weak alignment property. It is too flexible and the hard alignment is sometimes better. This part is mitigated by using CTC. And the CTC does not have a token dependency based on the conditional independence assumption. But attention has. So if we combine attention uh, to CTC, we can actually solve the other uh, uh, drawbacks of these two models. So this is a kind of recap 
uh, of the uh, the attention uh, based approach and the CTC based approach in terms of the alignment property. CTC has an explicit uh, monotonic alignment behavior so that we can get a very beautiful uh, monotonic alignment in general. While the attention-based approaches can actually attend everywhere. This doesn't hold the monotonic properties explicitly. So uh, the, this uh, the alignment property is actually quite uh, difficult especially when attention uh, is trained with the small amount of data or less tuning and so on. Given this, uh, the, uh, the drawbacks of two method, uh, actually uh, the, our group and one of the, uh, the author, first author, uh, the Su Yong Kim, is an, actually uh, the, the alumni of CMU. Uh, we actually uh, tried to kind of mitigate this uh, CTC uh, attention network and then uh, propose a very simple solution, which is we just using the multitask learning. We just using the encoder shared between CTC and attention. Basically, that's it. This is a very implicit way. But due to the kind of a CTC loss, we are expecting this encoder to have a monotonic behavior. This is very implicit way. It's not uh, the directly forcing them to be monotonic. You see that this arrow doesn't go to the attention network. But uh, the, our intention is this implicit uh, the regularization may be fine. Feature guide, uh, the guide, the attention, uh, cross attention to be monotonic. Uh, that is our actually aim. And uh, actually this is the result uh, the, of the attention plot. So this is a kind of typical failed attention plot. Even we kind of trained more the attention doesn't go to the monotonic behavior. While if we using the multitask learning, even in the early epoch, uh, network started to actually uh, learn the monotonic attention. And then we can get uh, the very stable uh, monotonic uh, the attention uh, the, in the early stage of the epoch. So this uh, approach uh, is uh, the, the uh, March task uh, based uh, CTC attention combination. By the way, I just want to mention that we actually tried to, how to say, uh, the explore more uh, the, by combining CTC and attention in many kind of our uh, the method by uh, the extending the formulation but uh, we could not come up with a uh, uh, unified uh, uh, formulation. Instead, this is actually uh, one of the, our kind of initial idea, but we decided not to, uh, that we decided to finally doing that, this simple method. And then it turns out to be working quite well. So uh, as I mentioned, this is multitask task question. And this uh, the training, uh, the method uh, is not uh, the, uh, directly forcing uh, the result to be uh, the, the monotonic. The next uh, direction is that since CTC attention, both network will produce some result, right? CTC is one of the end-to-end -end method. Attention-based SR is uh, one of the end-to-end uh, -end SR method. So both actually producing the speech condition result. Especially this side, CTC side, is actually uh, the, the considered a hard assignment. And we will have our, uh, the, surely get the a monotonic result. While uh, this one uh, doesn't have such kind of property, 
but thanks to the uh, decoder network, which is actually including the language modeling, it's actually considered a label dependency. So by combining these, the, these two outputs, we could possibly satisfy the alignment, uh, monotonic alignment issue and the label dependency issue. So this is actually the second idea. After the multi task learning, we actually even combine the two of the systems. And how to combine them uh, during the, uh, the, the inference uh, will be explained in the search in the next week. But basically, we just combine two out of it. This one is more explicit than previous approach because we directly using CTC output. And this uh, that turns out to actually improve the performance quite a lot. So uh, this uh, two results showing that first line is purely just using attention and this result. By the way, if we purely using CTC, uh, this re CTC result will be even worse than attention. Why? This is because CTC doesn't consider the token dependency, okay? And then the first idea, multi-task learning, just you know, share the encoder and the train the CTC and the attention other jointly. And then during the inference, we only using attention, by the way. And then we already get some significant improvement. The last approach is combining CTC output and the attention output as I mentioned before, uh, which is a quite straightforward approach, but one of the way to explicitly solving the both problem. And by doing that, we actually get the further improvement, this one, right? It's actually at a, get the, at a, at a over 10% relative improvement. That is very significant. So, I will show you the, some kind of example. I think I mentioned I showed you once before, uh, but I just want to add a, a re review uh, this one again. So this result, uh, we have a uh, three uh, attentions. So it's actually continued uh, uh, the same phrase three times. That is uh, that became normal uh, based on this uh, the, the CTC attention. Uh, the, the hybrid method. By the way, this uh, uh, kind of errors often happen when you guys are using the attention-based SR. Okay. So to detect this kind of errors, my suggestion is to check the substitution, deletion, and the insertion errors. Okay. We can compute it using the uh, edit distance, right? And then if the insertion is very large, there are two possibilities. One is that the, uh, this kind of problem, the attention is not working well. And then uh, the, the attention is attend many of the uh, token at the same time. So this is a kind of typical insertion error. The other possible insertion errors, by the way, happen when we apply to the conversational speech. In this case, for example, even our target is to uh, recognize my speech, my voice. The other people may also speaking. And then speech recognition uh, try to also recognize both speech. So we have to eliminate the interference speaker. But that also happens in the very general situations. In these cases, we also have to make the speech recognition to be robust to only focus on the target speech. That will be covered in the, uh, the, after the Thanksgiving. The next example is also very typical, uh, the errors in the attention. So uh, this one actually stop to attend and then uh, do not continue the hypothesis. In this case, what happens? We have a tons of deletion errors. So again, uh, the, if you have uh, uh, the, the, some attention-based approaches, 
and then uh, the, you have some kind of issues uh, that very large other uh, errors in your decoding result. Please check the insertion, substitution, and the deletion. And then you can find what's happening. Uh, by the way, if uh, the, the uh, insertion, deletion are same range, and the substitution errors are, are the mostly done, uh, mostly, most of the kind of cases, in these cases, model is wrong. <laughs> okay. So this uh, the approach is to kind of detect whether uh, the, the, uh, the, our kind of attention mechanism is uh, the correct or not uh, by using the uh, insertion and deletion. Uh, the, the unbalanced uh, errors come from the uh, insertion and deletions. And then by using the hybrid uh, CTC attention method, we can actually recover the result and then we can get the quite uh, the, the, uh, the beautiful uh, monotonic alignment. And the ESP net uh, that uh, the, the, the used in several of my lectures is uh, based on this CTC attention. And CTC attention is uh, the very stable, uh, I'd say. Training is actually faster. As you see that the, the, the monotonic alignment pattern appeared in the early epochs, right? And very robust. And the decoding result is not broken uh, compared with the other uh, attention, soft attention. CTC can actually also uh, make a kind of uh, the stable result in terms of the decoding. But the CTC doesn't have a uh, label dependency and the performance is generally worse. So that uh, the, by combining this, uh, the, the CTC attention actually gets a quite stable result. By the way, I'm only talking about the attention side uh, as a main decoder, main output. Or C CTC attention is actually combining them, but we're still using the attention. The other question is, this CTC attention multitask learning improve the CTC result or not? Can, can you <laughs> answer that? Multitask learning, uh, this approach originally, we intended to actually regularize the uh, encoder to be monotonic. And we found that this multitask learning is actually improving attention decoder. And it actually turns out that CTC is also greatly improved by using this constraint. So this uh, way of you know, uh, multitasking similar task and the, but different architecture and the encoder is basically similar nature, right? This other condition is quite good to other improve the actually uh, the, the performance of the encoder itself. So that CTC can also actually improve, can be improved uh, by using this uh, the CTC attention network. So again, uh, the, if we're using the, uh, the transformer to conformer, spec augment, uh, self-condition CTC, and uh, hybrid uh, the CTC attention, uh, probably you guys can get uh, less than 5% what error rate uh, in this other uh, coding assignment for. Okay, so uh, the, uh, this uh, the CTC attention is actually uh, quite uh, widely used in various uh, the, um, uh, various researchers. But I just want to have a one note. This is not only the choice, okay? Especially attention actually can, we can make attention work very well if we have a large amount of data and if we have a lot of tuning effort. And in this case, it happens in the uh, industry side. So many uh, the, the industrial systems 
may use the CTC attention at the multitask learning, but usually they don't have to use the, uh, the joint decoding because they have enough training data, enough uh, the uh, tuning effort to make attention to be working. And the vice versa for the CTC side as well. But uh, this uh, CTC attention is quite uh, the, the, uh, powerful in terms of, we don't need uh, so many large amount of data. And uh, the, the more important part is that we don't need so many tuning. And then the attention is working. So this approach is quite academic friendly, I'd say. So that actually many researchers are, work, are using it. Okay, so, uh, okay, last part. Um, I will also introduce another last combination of uh, the CTC and the other method. Previously, I talked about CTC and attention and I'll try to make it complementary. There is another direction of the, uh, the, the decoder network, which is the uh, mask prediction. This mask prediction is, as I mentioned, uh, uh, the, uh, used in BART uh, often. And this uh, the, uh, equation is written usually like this. For example, to predict, uh, some token in J, we just uh, try to predict this J based on the all other uh, unmasked context, including the future context and so on. And this number of masks can be actually not one, but it can be more. But basically uh, this approach, a uh, mask prediction is also quite popular uh, in the, uh, the uh, solving uh, the, our kind of language, uh, the, the prediction problem. And the uh, recent approach is try to combine CTC and this mask prediction. And actually mask prediction itself is just a language model. So it doesn't have a uh, nature of adjusting the input and the output, which is very important for speech recognition. That is actually done by CTC. And again, CTC doesn't have a token dependency. That is uh, considered by using the mask prediction. So they are complementary. And it sounds like similar to attention, a uh, CTC combination, right? But there is another important, uh, the uh, unique uh, the, the, uh, characteristic of the mask predicts based approaches. This is actually no autoregressive. It's not like our uh, autoregressive, which means that we kind of have to, do not have to wait for the, uh, the previous token to be estimated. It can be parallelized uh, the, across the uh, entire uh, the token uh, sequence. So uh, mask predict is known as a non autoregression model. And the last time we discussed that CTC is also non autoregression model. So the combination of the non autoregression model and the non autoregression model is actually non autoregression. So this means that the mask CTC is not satisfying the combination benefit of the uh, the, the CTC and the, some of the advanced decoder, it also ensure the not regressive nature. Okay, so let's uh, the, the, uh, discuss about uh, the mask uh, CTC. Uh, this is actually quite uh, similar to the uh, previous uh, the CTC uh, attention architecture. We have encoder, decoder, and the CTC. However, the inference method is not autoregressive. It's actually a uh, non autoregressive based on the, uh, the mask credit. So, this idea is actually uh, doing the two pass method. First, we get the CTC result. And then, if there are some mistakes, 
mask predict actually are uh, the correct. This are uh, the CTC wrong output based on the CTC are uh, the information and the uh, other uh, acoustic uh, information here. We are actually also using the cross attention here. Okay, so first part of getting the CTC results, we just using the greedy decoding. This is purely just CTC, okay. And then once we get the CTC result, we actually feeding this information, entire information to this other decoder, like this, okay. And then uh, the transformer decoder is defined uh, based on the uh, mask-based approaches. And then the, the, how we kind of making the mask is quite important. In this case, we actually are using the probability uh, that comes other from the CTC. So we actually try to identify uh, the low confidence token are uh, uh, estimated in the beginning of the CTC and then try to define it. So for example, CTC providing the probability of each token, right? So we can actually add a, uh, get to this kind of a distribution. Uh, in these cases, first and the fourth tokens are lower probability, but the others are higher probability higher confidence. So maybe we can leave these three as it is, as they are. And then we can try to update this two one. And then we actually masking these two unreliable other token. And then other throwing it to the mask, uh, mask language model decoder. And then we can try to uh, de-predict the new result uh, from this kind of a, a previously estimated token in fast decoding of CTC. So by doing that iteratively, this iterative part is, by the way, not uh, the non progressive It can be, a, a, if we have a many iteration, it's actually not becomes the, uh, the first compared with a non regressive method. But at least for each step of the iteration, for this other uh, 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 mask prediction part is completely a node leadership. We can parallelize this other uh, 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 prediction. And then uh, uh, we do actually this process at, again and again. After the other uh, first iteration, uh, that we also uh, uh, make other uh, confidence and then uh, masking this one and getting this one and uh, this becomes the final result and so on. So this is a mask predict uh, the, the based on uh, the CTC. And we call this approach a mask CTC. And this is a result of the uh, mask CTC. So this is a, a, a correct transcription. And this is a greedy CTC. We made some kind of mistakes, right? Again, CTC doesn't cover uh, the conditional index uh, the, uh, doesn't have a uh, the label token dependency. So uh, the, especially they are not good at recovering the, uh, the, the word. However, uh, by the using the uh, mask CTC decoding, we gradually improving each of the token. And then uh, finally, uh, we can actually get the improvement here and here, but this one is actually remained as a wrong uh, the result uh, and so on. So again, to predict this one, we using the, uh, how do I say, the context information of these other parts. Same, for the, to predicting this one, we using the context information of all the other, uh, the, the, uh, the context information to define the CTC result. So this is another way of combining 
uh, CTC and the uh, the label uh, the token uh, the token dependency. And by using this kind of combination, we can again uh, uh, mitigate the issue of the uh, the CTC. So this is a summary of CTC. CTC is the most simple end-to-end uh, -end A star. And this uh, the, derives by using the uh, conditional independence assumption. Compared with the HMM, uh, the, it's actually less uh, the, 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 the assumption, but uh, compared with attention, it still has a quite uh, the, the aggressive conditional independence, I would say. But due to that, we actually can uh, get a simple end-to-end uh, -end SR. But the label uh, the dependency, token dependency, is one of the most important nature in uh, speech recognition. So many people are actually using uh, the moving to RN transducer uh, due, to, due to this lack of the, uh, the conditional independence assumption. However, many people are actually now revisiting CTC. Uh, because it's simple. And if it's getting powerful, uh, the, the, we should definitely use CTC. And uh, as a kind of uh, example, I use the, uh, the two direction. One is to use the intermediate self-conditioned CTC to relax the conditional independence assumption, which actually improves the performance quite largely. And the other is a combination uh, with the uh, other uh, the models that consider the uh, token dependency like uh, attention-based model uh, or uh, mask-based approaches. Okay, this is the, uh, the summary of CTC. Uh, do you have any question? Okay, sounds good. And uh, good luck for the coding assignment, Paul, again. You know, this is based on CTC. And I put, a, I put a lot of tips and how to improve the CTC and so on. So uh, 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 let's try to work on it. The last end-to-end uh, uh, -end ASR method is uh, RNN transducer. And similar to the uh, other end-to-end -end based approaches, RNN transducer is also making the problem uh, to be solved by end-to-end uh, -end single neural network. And we already introduced uh, uh, the alignment probability uh, property uh, of RNN transducer. And I just want to uh, the, uh, recap uh, the RNN transducer uh, with the alignment part again. So first, uh, RNN transducer, uh, same for the other method, like uh, the CTC or attention, we'll consider input and token a sequence, similar to the uh, previous approaches. And please remember that uh, the uh, token index is J, okay? And the, uh, the total length is large J, uppercase J. And the input is T. And the length would be the upper case of the T. And one more, uh, the, the clarification is that this T can will be generally after the downsampling. So it is not the original length, but it's usually uh, the, the quarter uh, or something like that. And then the, the similar to the HMM or CTC, uh, what we will do for the RN transducer is that we make a trellis, okay? Starting from the left bottom corner and reaching to the top right corner. Same for the CTC or the HMM-based approaches. In CTC and the, uh, the HMM cases, if we are the moving to toward the last other uh, token, always we actually consuming one frame to output some token, right? 
So always the arrow is actually when we add a con when we output some token, the arrow is actually tilted, not like a vertical or horizontal. However, RN translator is very cool. Actually, we also allow this vertical transition. This means that the, the, without consuming the frame, we can actually output the token sequence. And uh, but uh, basically, uh, all the other part is same. Uh, if we write a trellis, we can just have a one one, for example, uh, the passes. And then uh, this uh, pass uh, becomes the realization of the alignment. And we consider uh, all possible passes uh, to uh, the make uh, RNT uh, to be working. And the one important note is that if we check the number of Acts here one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's actually longer than input. So, by considering this kind of vertical, uh, the arc, the total length of the uh, this RN transducer uh, becomes the summation of the uh, total length of the input and the output. So which becomes a J plus T. So this is a kind of a, uh, the, the one uh, slight difference uh, of the RN transistor. So the other uh, the, uh, hard alignment based approach like HMM uh, or CTC, what uh, that we have done is after we define the alignment, we regarding this alignment as a variable, and then uh, introducing the latent variable. So this uh, the, the methodology is actually completely same. Even it is HMM, CTC, RN transistor. First, we introduce the alignment variable, and then how to incorporate this to the model, we use a sum rule, right? So sum rule, uh, product rule, conditional independent assumption is again, very important to understand our problems. And uh, it is actually one of the uh, main topic uh, of this lecture, I would say. So I'm again, very glad that the midterm exam, everyone actually <laughs> uh, understand uh, the importance of this uh, the, the rule and then can get the quite a good uh, the result. Please remember that and utilize it, your problem, okay? Always try to kind of uh, tackle uh, the, the, this problem based on the uh, what we have run it is very important. And then the, the actually after the summation, uh, after the sum rule, we also the, the performing the factorization uh, the product rule or chain rule derived from the product rule. Okay, so from here to here, we don't use any uh, the, the, any assumption at all, similar to attention. By the way, one important remark is again, the uh, alignment variable uh, is has the length of T plus J, okay, not the T. This is also different uh, compared with the, uh, HMM or CTC based approaches. And then uh, the, uh, the how to cook uh, this equation is uh, the, the, our kind of target. And the first part is to actually converting this previous token history, uh, previous alignment history, sorry, previous alignment history to the token history. 
and then making this model to be depending on previously estimated uh, token history and observation. And to, how to get this kind of uh, the token? We actually using the, uh, the uh, RN transducer rule, which is very similar to CTC. We just removing the blank, that's it. Okay, so I will uh, explain a bit more about uh, this part with some other example. So again, uh, similar to the uh, CTC and the, uh, the HMM, but anyway, understanding the alignment is the most important part of the uh, RN transducer. So I will kind of explain it with some other example. So let's say we have uh, this kind of uh, the RNT trellis, and this one is the kind of uh, one of the paths of the RN transistor. And then we also think about the partial alignment, like one of one to four or one to n. Why this partial alignment, alignment is important? Because here we use a partial alignment, right? So let's think about what is this partial alignment. And actually, in these cases, in these cases, in this alignment path, Z1 to 4 uh, means that we are here, right? We are here. And then, actually, uh, this uh, the, uh, position observation is t equal to and the uh, the uh, token position is actually e and if we consider the uh, the partial alignment it becomes the partial uh, the, the token history of s and e okay so uh the, the it is a more uh for the introduction of this kind of our uh, the concept so again, basically, uh, in this kind of trellis, uh, that we basically focus on the node, and then uh, the following passes and so on, right? In the previous cases, when we are four here, this means that the uh, the this pass are uh, reaching this Z four, okay? And then Z four actually has a information of the uh, the time in the input is two and the time for the output is also two zero one two okay so actually for each node we can specify uh, the how many input uh, the, the we kind of are uh, the considered and how many output uh, we consider okay and uh, given the path we can actually recover the information uh, of in these cases uh, the, what is the input and what is the output okay given the node information we can know where we are in terms of uh, the, the uh, input and the output uh, the uh, the token position. So we use this information. Actually, uh, in these cases, instead of uh, getting the alignment uh, information, we actually converting this to the corresponding token history. So now we know that the, given the some kind of a node, we can find the token history, right? So we can actually do it. Instead of using the alignment condition, at, at the, at the converting it to the token, at the, at the corresponding token history, that is the, the, what the RN transducer is doing. Okay, so uh, the, given that, let's uh, try to make this probability to be realized with our actual neural network. 
first part is to uh, get some information about the observation. And we just using the encoder. It can be BLSTM or transformer or whatever. This is very similar to the previous discussions. Just we changing the information uh, to be uh, the more uh, the, the high level representation. And this part, since this encoder doesn't have uh, any information about token, so this means that without caring about any token information, we just sweep entire input. Again, it is similar to the CTC or attention encoder. Next part, let's start to consider about the, the token dependency. Again, as I mentioned, we can actually converting this information to the token, okay? And then uh, the, the, what we want to do is actually we want to predict uh, this uh, the token here. And then we should not providing the, this token as a condition, right? Uh, the, we should not uh, the providing the condition of the correct information. Then your network cannot do anything or just copying the history, right? So generally we providing the uh, history of the previous token. So so that this one becomes actually minus one, okay. And then how to get the information of the history of one to uh, JK minus one. We just using a recurrent neural network language model, recurrent neural network. So which is depending on the previous token and this is recursively done so that we can consider all kind of history. And then we get the some hidden state representation similar to encoder, okay. And the similarly to the encoder, in these cases, we don't care about the observation. We just purely run the language model, that's it, okay. So now we have an information of the, uh, the hidden state uh, given token position and given the, uh, the, the input at the position. And then we actually combine them. Uh, that is a kind of a, a, a called the joint models. So how to combine them is very similar to the attention-based approaches. We just have our hidden state comes from the token and comes from the uh, the, the input, right? And then we make some score. This is scatter for each of the kind of our vocabulary. And then throw it the softmax. And we get the probability. So this is actually joint modeling part. Again, given the alignment and some kind of our each point, uh, we can get this kind of a pairs of the hidden state vector and then combining it, that's it. And this is actually sweeping this uh, the, the space in the, uh, the time, uh, the input dimension and the output dimension and combine this information, that's it. It can be a way to, you know, uh, doing more kind of a complicated sweeping, by the way, by using, for example, uh, the, the, uh, the key, making this uh, matrix to be very large single uh, vector and then doing a self-attention. <laughs> that is also possible, by the way. Uh, but the, in the RN transducer, uh, specifically, uh, people are using this uh, the 2D grid uh, the, the sweeping. Uh, the which is uh, quite efficient in terms of the computational cost. But basically we just pro, uh, doing some 2D neural network sweeping and then providing the score uh, the, based on the each point of the node. Okay, so uh, the, the, how to get the 
score, how to get the probability. This is uh, very similar to what we have done in the attention. In the attention cases, we try to get the similarity of the token and the, uh, the, the, the token and the, the uh, input information. And then uh, we actually are using the, uh, the inner product and then making it scalar and the throw it to the softmax and then we can get the probability. So basically we can do the same thing. Uh, they are based on the two vectors. We converting it to the scalar and then taking the softmax. By the way, the, the softmax here in the uh, attention, it is uh, based on the, uh, the, uh, the, the, uh, the frame input information. So sum to one is applied for the other uh, input. But in the RN transducer cases, this output is actually vocabulary plus blank symbol. So this one is not other across the frame, but this one is across the element of the vocabulary. Okay, this is a difference. And how to make it scalar? Actually, the, the, we already again introduced in the uh, the, uh, the uh, attention-based approaches. One approach is actually using the uh, linear transformation and then uh, the, the using the inner product to make it scalar. So the important part is that this matrix is actually projecting these two hidden states comes from the different source to the same dimension, okay? So that we can combine it. In this case, we just adding. And there are several other variations making this part to be complicated. Or we can also using the element-wide operation and so on. This part can be anything, just getting the scalar and then uh, that we can get the probability. So I think this part uh, would be the one of the uh, research topic, I would say. Actually, several people are the, the proposing the uh, various variants of the disjoint modeling part. And the, uh, for example, remember that, uh, that in attention, instead of using this kind of uh, the, uh, linear transformation, we could also using the inner product, right? And probably one another possibility is in the product. Unfortunately, uh, the, in the in the product cases, uh, we observe some kind of small degradation. And uh, currently, this additive case is the most uh, the widely used. But again, it can be a research part to improve the joint model uh, of the RN transducer. Okay, so this is a kind of an entire part of the RN transducer. It is based on the encoder and the, uh, the, this uh, the, the different neural network architecture to get the, uh, the hidden state of the token. And this part is also called a token uh, predictor. And then uh, the joint modeling to combine it and then providing the, uh, the, the probability. So this architecture is a basic RN transducer. Encoder to get to the hidden state, uh, the token prediction network to get the hidden state of the output side, joint model to actually get the probability. And then this encoder part can be actually same with the CTC or attention, but the decoder part is different uh, from the, the CTC uh, the, and the even uh, attention-based uh, approaches. Okay, this is a kind of a uh, summary. Uh, this is a kind of an explanation about the RN transducer. And uh, I will summarize RN transducer, but actually I this summary is not like a one page. I will try to providing the information of the comparison with the previous uh, the, the method, and then uh, discuss about the other uh, the property, uh, other summary of the RN transducer. 
first, uh, let's discuss about RN transducer versus CTC. One of the biggest difference is a conditional independence assumption. This is assumption. This is approximation. So actually, due to that, RN transducer is generally better than CTC as a peer model. However, CTC can actually combine the language model. And then actually performance is still RN transducer is slightly better, but this kind of a gap becomes very smaller. So this is not the completely uh, the biggest pro uh, drawback now. And compared with the CTC, RN transducer is actually becomes a little bit uh, the, the complicated. And uh, compared with CTC greedy decoding, uh, the inf inference cannot be parallelized. And also the similar to the attention-based approaches, we actually had the issue uh, of the uh, using the shallow language, uh, shallow fusion language model, external language model. Uh, CTC uh, doesn't have a language model component, so we can safely combine the external language model. Attention, we cannot safely combine it uh, because we have a decoder network which has a language model component. Similar discussion is applied to uh, the RN transducer. RN transducer has a label prediction network which is very similar to the language model. So actually, similar to the attention, we have a duplication of the language model issues. And the other interesting nature is a tolerance structure. So compared with the, uh, the CTC, RN transducer tolerance is actually bigger, right? And it actually has a flexibility. First, it has a very good flexibility. And the RN transducer is due to this kind of very flexible tolerance and the large size of the trays, it becomes more uh, the, the stable, unstable than CTC in terms of training. So it actually requires uh, the more uh, the memory and the more tuning. And the, uh, the similar to the attention-based ASR, uh, RN transfers actually uh, the consider the history during the training, and the which is actually based on the ground truth. And then it actually has the, uh, the, the uh, the mismatch of the training and the inference, because during inference, instead of using the ground truth, we're using the estimated history. So this is the, the inherited, uh, the similar kind of uh, drawback uh, with attention-based approaches. RN transfers actually has a lot of variants. Uh, the, especially uh, this storage structure is not unique. We can actually add, 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 make the, uh, the various kind of a structure of the trace. One of the well-known trace structure is like this. We do not allow to have our uh, two token to be add, 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 produced at the same time. So we don't have a, uh, the, 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 the path of from here to here. Just restricting the, uh, the vertical uh, the, uh, the uh, path to be only one or two, depending on the kind of configuration. And this is very reasonable assumption. And as you can see, that this tolerance is actually smaller than the original one. So this is actually quite often used, especially during the uh, inference. And the other brand new result, which uh, actually the NVIDIA and uh, the, our kind of collaboration uh, is that we actually introducing the skip here, skip uh, the arc here. This means that when we don't need to kind of uh, the, the scan this uh, the, the information, we can actually choose to the next one. This is still okay, right? This is just another kind of uh, the, the authority structure. This actually significantly reduce the decoding speed. And the, I think this method would be a uh, possible alternative to the standard RN transducer, which we submitted very recently uh, in the archive. Okay, so the last part is the RN transducer versus uh, attention. 
And please look at this. It is very similar, right? There are some kind of a functional difference, but the most important part of the difference could be actually this part. Attention have to consider all kind of our input. While the RN transducer can only using the, uh, the one of them to uh, get the probability at the T. So this actually nature is quite different and quite has a kind of a, a lot of pros and cons uh, compared with RN transducer versus attention, which I will explain Wednesday. Okay, uh, that's it. Thank you so much.